This Ben White story just will not go away. We've got new details. Plus, Bayern Munich are experiencing something of an injury crisis whilst the international break goes on. And there's even more to talk about with a brand new contract to celebrate too. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having what I hope to be a, a brilliant week. It's Thursday, which is one of the best days of the week. I love Thursdays. Thursdays are good because it means you've got Friday next day. It's the weekend. It just always feels like if, if you're an optimistic, positive person like myself, I think you enjoy Thursdays because Friday for me is the weekend. You know when you hit Friday, you're there. Should get through one more day and you're done. Thankfully, what's even better is when you can take a day off on a Thursday, which is what today is for me. So very pleased about that. That said, I've got a hugely busy day ahead of me still. Lots of jobs to do and another show to do as well for you guys to enjoy tonight. I'll be joined by Alex from The Different Knock to have a chat about all things Arsenal. We've got a topic in mind um, that will be revealing a little bit later on today. So that's 6 p.m. UK time. I'll be joined by Alex. So do make sure you... Turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. And uh, if you haven't dropped a like on the video, please do. Those that are listening on Catch Up, thank you. Those that are listening on audio platforms, thank you. Do hop over to the YouTube and help us on our way to 1K every single day. Um, and yesterday, of course, we did another show. I was joined by DG Deluded Guna to talk about our dream Arsenal summer transfer window as if it was happening right now. So... Go over there and find out who we would pick in our dream teams and uh, our reasons as to why. And let us know in the comments section what your dream summer might indeed look like. It features a number of interesting targets and some really good conversations about the different descriptions as well of what those different areas of the team that we think need addressing are as well. But let's jump into the chat box this morning and say good morning to our fantastic listeners that have tuned in live. Damien, Paul, Franklin, uh, Temi, we've got Rich and Glenn and Bruce and Shari, Harris and Stevie, Carlton, Matt G, Kaiser, Rancid, Tabani, Guna76, Carl, Arasilki, Graham, Louis, Martin, Barry, T, Amira, uh, Steve, Peter, Runs with Cows, Rob, Kim, uh, James, thank you so much to all of you for tuning in. It is hugely appreciated. And I hope you've had a fantastic week so far and you're doing good and well. So jumping into our first story of the day, uh, Takahiro Tomiyasu signed a brand new contract with Arsenal. Um, this was signed, well, it was signed and has been signed for a little while, but it was announced yesterday morning at nine o'clock. I had to stay pretty darn quiet about this one because actually i found out that it was going to be announced uh, before yesterday morning's 8am show. And I knew that I'd get people tweeting me like, oh, look at that, Tom, Arsenal announcing another thing at nine o'clock, right after your morning show. And I was sitting there going, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I know it's going to happen because I already had the uh, the quotes to go out at nine o'clock with, uh, with the announcement. But you know, regardless, it is brilliant, brilliant news for Arsenal um, to see Takatira Tommy Asu sign that new extension. It runs through until 2026 with a one year option included in that as well, um, which is really positive. Uh, I think that some people are asking the question. I think there were two camps in this, really. There were obviously the people that were pleased and then there were the people that were kind of questioning um, as well. So I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the those that are questioning this. And I think it's actually a really easy contract to understand. It's a one-year extension on the current contract that he had. It was currently running until 2025 with an option of a one-year extension. This one now runs to 2026 with an option of a one-year extension. So you've got that three-year freedom, if you want to call it that, with the option included in that. It's not the same as Ben White's deal, which runs through until 2028 with a one-year option in that deal. And that's because Ben White's availability has been excellent. He's been in good form. He's continuously starting for us. And there are a few question marks about Tommy Asu regarding his fitness and whether or not Arsenal could commit to him in the long term. And so I think they've come to an agreement in the middle ground of extending through to 26 plus one so it balances things. You know, it keeps Tommy Asu at the club. We don't have to worry about his commitment. We don't have to worry about negotiating a new contract for, a, you know, potentially uh, another year. And so I think for that reason, this is the right choice. What I would say is there was a number of reports that did come out um, 
well ahead of this deal getting done that suggested it was a long-term contract that he'd signed. That, that never was the case. So just always be wary um, and always wait until the proper news comes out because it's worth not jumping the gun and then getting your, your details wrong on these things. Moving forwards, um, we'll get to Saka in a second, but first we're going to go to Bayern Munich, who have suffered a double injury blow. Manuel Neuer is the first player that we need to talk about. He has supposedly suffered a tear of an adductor, which is keeping him out of the international break with Germany. There aren't necessarily confirmations that he will miss the game against Arsenal in the Champions League. There are fears that he'll miss the game against Borussia Dortmund for Bayern after this um, this break runs out. I'm trying to plug my uh, charger in because once again, I forget. That's the problem with having two laptops is that you forget to plug the charger in. Um, but yes, it's the, uh, the adductor issue means that there is some fear that he could yet um, miss the game against Arsenal. If that happens, of course, they've got um, they've got backups, they've got reinforcement in their team. But I don't know if it's Ulrich that's that's still there um, for Bayern. But uh, Manuel Neuer is is one of those uh, injury issues. The other injury issue, as you can see in this photo, is Sasha Bowie. He could be out for as long as six weeks uh, with an injury, which of course would mean he would miss both games against Arsenal in the Champions League. Of course, Bowie was linked to Arsenal, signed by Bayern in January from Galatasaray. He's played a couple of games. He's not necessarily a guaranteed starter, so it's not necessarily a huge injury blow to buy. And they've got Masraoui, of course, on the other side as well. So I don't think it's necessarily like a big blow to buy and losing Bowie, but they maybe would have liked to have had him in the team. They started him in that game against Bayer Leverkusen that they lost. They started him actually on the left wing back kind of position in that game to try and counteract Bayer Leverkusen's real strength with Frimpong and, and Grimaldo, but it didn't work because they lost that game 3 0. But let's see how it how they react, how they respond, and whether they'll be available, of course, for that game against Arsenal on uh, when early April, the second week of April. Moving forwards then into the England camp, Bakaya Saka is said to have trained inside as prep begins for the game against Brazil on Saturday. I'm going to be at that game working it, covering London's players, um, which of course includes Bakaya Saka. Uh, hopefully it's not uh, anything serious and there's just kind of precautions going on with some players training inside at the moment. Declan Rice trained outside, for instance. I think it's just about building up and getting a feel for where the players are all at before that game against Brazil at the weekend. You'd hope that England wouldn't take any risks with any of their players, especially with how important they'll all be for the summer and the European Championships. But it's, it's building up to be an intriguing game. There'll be no Arsenal-Brazil players on offer with Gabriel Martinelli, Gabriel Magalhaes, both injured, and uh, Mar and uh, Jesus, of course, not selected. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be an intriguing game all the same. <laughs> Moving to our next story, and probably the biggest story, I suppose, of yesterday was that of Ben White. Um, ben White, again, very much in the news, very much uh, at the focus of this I don't want to call it a scandal. I think that probably goes too far. Um, but what I do think is that this has really rocked the relationship between a lot of Arsenal fans and their association or their feeling towards the current coaching setup at England. And for good reason. Because if you remember back to that press conference that Gareth Southgate did where he talked and said explicitly about there being no issue between Steve Holland and and Ben White, and, you know, making out that that was nothing to do with as to why Ben wasn't in the team. Well, the Telegraph came out yesterday uh, with a, another story talking about uh, the rift between Holland and White. It is said that, reportedly, Steve uh, Holland asked Carl Walker, and I think John Stones as well, a question related to Manchester City's performance in the previous season. He posed the same question to Ben White, in regards to Arsenal as well. Um, and Ben White apparently wasn't necessarily able to answer the question or he didn't know the answer to the question. And that apparently led Steve Holland reportedly to say something on the lines of like, well, you don't really have an interest in football, um, is, is what it turns out was, was said. Um, which, in front of the other players, if indeed is true, it just seems like an, a chaotic unnecessary jibe um, for me. And I talked about this before. I'm not going to go into loads of detail because I feel like I addressed it in a show last week, but in terms of like, I mean, Clive saying here is a question apparently about defensive 
statistics. I mean, if Ben White doesn't know off the top of his head the defensive statistics of of Arsenal, cool. Like, I'm, I'm not particularly that fast. He's gone there to, to play for England, you know. We know from watching Ben White that he is utterly and entirely in tune with what Arsenal do. He's able to transition to a right-back position. He's able to transition to an inverted right-back position seamlessly. He's able to pop up in the right areas that Mikel Arteta wants him to. And he's been one of our best players, if not our best player, in 2024. He's a player that understands entirely and coherently and perfectly what Mikel Arteta expects of him as a player. And that is exactly why the club have committed an improved and long-term contract to him. Because he wasn't able to answer a question on, as Clive points out here, defensive statistics about where Arsenal are at, to then be told, oh, it's because you don't have an interest in football, if, and it's the if, this story is indeed true, then I just cannot get my head around why there is just such an absence of consideration for the different personalities and the different characters that exist in the England squad. As a coach and a manager, and as a manager in any setting, not just football, in any setting, it is about understanding the different personalities, the different people, the different characters that exist in your teams. And some people are different to others. And whilst Carl Walker and John Stones might be able to perfectly convey what they want to say about Manchester City's defensive statistics or strategies or you know how they defended, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if you've got somebody that's not that way inclined, then you need to adapt. Pull them aside if you need to and have a conversation one-on-one. Learn that you don't pull them out in front of everybody else to be kind of like exposed in some ways. It's as coaches, you are supposed to learn. You are supposed to adapt. And it seems if the story is indeed true, that that has just not happened. And what has happened is they have completely ostracized Ben White and disassociated his attachment with this current England setup. And you cannot blame Ben White at all for acting in this way. And what I thought was also really great that emerged yesterday was some quotes from Connor Cody. Of course, Connor Cody had been in the England squad with Ben White, and he was talking to Five Lives Sport, and he said, when I was in the England squad, and he was, he was a great character to have around the place. He's a great lad, first and foremost. How he trains, how he goes on about his business, he is top, top draw. Yeah, it's sad that he's not playing for England because I think he's a phenomenal player. And this tells you everything you need to know about a player's character, somebody that's not a teammate in terms of a club sense. It's in terms of what we're seeing as a player on international duty. Clive says the Telegraph are very accurate. White is being demonised for how he spends his free time. It's bad management. And I, I can't disagree. I think it's terrible. I'd already had my massive reservations about this current coaching setup. I think we are wasting a golden generation of English talent that could be going on to do brilliant, brilliant things. It's just not, it's not just my questions about how they manage players as individuals. I have my question marks about the coaching strategies of this England team. It does not maximize the talent that we've got. It does not utilize the strengths of the side. It does not play the best players in the best positions. It's too loyal to certain players that shouldn't be there. It's not giving opportunities to players that should be there and aren't. There are so many issues with this England squad. And it is down to the powers that be, if that's the FA, to recognize that and to make difficult decisions. England have underachieved in the last six to eight years. And, our, and England need to do something and the FA needs to do something about that to address that going forwards. There's recent stories about Manchester United apparently seeing Gareth Southgate as the perfect replacement to Eric Ten Hag. My goodness me, from an unbiased Arsenal perspective, in air quotes, I'd love that to happen because I think it would be hugely detrimental to Manchester United and massively beneficial to Arsenal. So I, for one, hope it happens. And yeah, I really feel for Ben White and can't wait, frankly, for this coaching staff to change around at England just so that we can see better opportunities and better management and better coaching take place in a squad that contains some of the best players in the world that sadly are not being maximised and not getting the full opportunity and potential that they deserve in an England setup. There we go. There's rant over. I said I weren't going to go too deeply into it, and I lied. I definitely did. Um, but what I won't lie about is the fantastic prize that football prizes are bringing you, which is continuing to be at the moment this William Saliba signed shirt. I'm surprised, actually, how few people are still... I say few people. There's only like 300, 400 people, I think, have bought tickets for this. But there's still around 80 tickets left. So you've got a good chance of winning, actually, better than before, if it, indeed it doesn't sell out. So get your tickets now. Link down in the description. A signed and framed William Saliba shirt. There's lots of instant win prizes that could still be available as well. All details of that are, of course, on the Football Prizes website. And I implore you to get involved, and I wish you the absolute best of luck in that. 
as well. Right, let's go to part two and your questions then right after this. Okay, jumping into the chat box um, and going through your questions and comments. Uh, Z, we'll kick this off. It just simply says, we love you, Ben White. And I think he's going to get all the support, all the help, all the encouragement he needs at Arsenal. And I don't blame him for wanting to stay. He's, he's beloved at Arsenal. He's liked universally at Arsenal. The fans love him. The coaches love him. And they understand him as well. And you need to be able to understand different players. People talked about Mikel Arteta, right, as a player that apparently couldn't manage big characters. Do you remember who said that? Do you remember who it was? It was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang that said that in a little interview that got released on YouTube with some jewellery company that he was talking to. You know, people talked about Aubameyang's lifestyle and his lifestyle choices. And people are now talking about Ben White and Ben White's lifestyle choices and what he does in his free time. If it was true that Mikel Arteta couldn't manage big personalities that have big lifestyles and you know things like this, and then I'm sorry, but Ben White wouldn't be in this Arsenal team because I can guarantee you that, that he is, and we can see that he is a different type of character to some of the normal. Not I don't want to use the word normal; that's unfair. I think t- typically to some of the other players that exist within the squad, he's got a different personality, and you have to react and adapt to that. And I think Mikel Arteta, and it's a credit to him and his coaching staff that they do indeed react to that. Um, James says, but does anybody love Benjamin more than Ars blog? I'm not sure, James. I don't think that's that's possible. Uh, Francois says, Tom, England uh, goes out of its way to suck at any competition they're in. What is Gareth Southgate still doing there? In the past five years, England have had at least seven of the best 11 players in the world. Um, the, I mean, I, I don't really know what else to add to that, Francois, to be honest. Uh, Tizer says, hi, Tom. Catched up on your dream Arsenal transfer window show last night. Was surprised a goalie was not mentioned considering we could be losing. It was mentioned. We, we, we talked about goalkeeper. It was We talked about the fact that goalkeepers was, there was two routes with the goalkeeper, that we didn't necessarily have any specific names. I think it's really difficult to come up with names. But if you listen back to the show in its entirety, we took me and DG talk about goalkeepers and whether the pathway to the next goalkeeper is an experienced older goalkeeper that we can bring in that's happy to be a number two, but still have the requisite quality like a Stefan Ortega, or whether we don't go down the route of a younger goalkeeper that you go and bring in to be something of an understudy that's got more talent, perhaps a higher ceiling that could make you a profit in the future potentially as well, but also is willing to sit behind and learn from David Raya. So yeah, we, we did talk about goalkeepers, Tizer. So maybe go back and listen to it and towards the end of the show, because we definitely do talk about goalkeepers. Uh, Ajmal says, Tom, how are journalists mostly getting information like the Ben White situation on the Holland issue? Somebody leaks it, or is it somebody from Ben White's or Holland's camp? Ajmal, as someone who's not connected to the story, I've not done personal digging on this story. I can't answer the question because I don't know. Um, I don't know the, the ins and outs of it. It could be anything and it would be unfair of me to even speculate on what the sources behind it are and then you know start pointing fingers so it's impossible for me to know the answer to that question because i'm not the journalist behind the story uh, sally says i work as a chartered accountant and when i get home i don't go through other businesses spreadsheets <laughs> i love that sally uh, jordan says i don't think ben white's a big character i don't think arteta can't handle big personalities it's more that he's no time to deal with the alba type personalities he can just replace them it's personal. This word personalities comes up a lot. If we're being very honest, like Abamyang, we know had a number of disciplinary breaches, was late to a North London derby as captain, and, and, and obviously, um, as we've come to learn, didn't follow instructions during a period where players had to be absolutely on it with their whereabouts when they were traveling abroad and all of this stuff. They had to be absolutely on it, and he didn't follow those circumstances. And so eventually, they moved him on. And they felt that he wasn't, it was the behavior was not acceptable. And you've got to back that. I don't think it's to do with personalities in that sense. It's just bad behavior. And Arteta made the right choices. And we know he's made the right choice because you can see the impact on the squad now. Jalali says there is a difference between a personality and a troublemaker. And I think that's absolutely spot on. Uh, Jordan says, exactly, Tom. I didn't want to get on to him, uh, but that was my point. Well, there you go. Uh, Tyler says, apologies if I missed the goalkeeper bit. I didn't see uh, the one that was picked. Uh, it's because we didn't really have a name. We just talked about the avenue of the goalkeeper. I think we could get two strikers this summer, as I believe we can make close to 100 million on player sales. And if we go for players with release clauses, 
as well. I mean, release the problem with release clause is they're often really high and usually higher than the market value of the player. But two strikers, I'm not sure is going to happen. I definitely think we can get a, a centre forward and a wide player. I think that's definitely within the realms of possibility. Um, but we will have to wait and see. Um, goodness me, Francois, that is incredibly generous. Thank you so much, Francois, for your very kind donation. Um, Tom, get a bottle of wine for you and the missus and behave yourself. <laughs> Uh, is it because I'm the right personality, Francois? Is that what it is? Is you, you trust what I do in my free time? Um, that's very, very generous of you indeed. Thank you so much for the kind support on the channel and the long-term listenership as well. Um, that really, really does mean a lot. And yes, I will. I'll take you up on the offer. Um, I think we've got a date day coming up next week. So uh, uh, thank you ever so much. Uh, Easy says, people can't seem to differentiate between big personalities and in discipline. Um, and not a big personality as well. I think, agreed, this is like, this term big personality gets used when talking about players with ill discipline. I don't think that's fair. I think you can have a big personality without being someone who's ill disciplined. You know, I'd, I'd probably go as far as saying I've got a relatively big personality, you know, but I don't feel like I'm ill disciplined. So, I, yeah, I wouldn't agree with that necessarily. Um, I, I mean, I agree with the comment in saying that I don't think there is a, I don't think you, I think you can differentiate between big personalities and people that are real disciplined. I don't think the two are hand in hand. Um, is someone who's got a big personality more likely to be ill disciplined? I don't know. I guess you'd have to do kind of a, a sample study. But uh, I, I personally don't think that what there is one without there isn't one without the other. I think that'd be a little bit short sighted. Uh, Kevin says, uh, "Would love to see Arsenal get Joshua Kimmich." He has a very Real Madrid type of feel to him, though. Anything under 40 million is worth it. Only 29, same age as Alaba, um, and was signed on a free. I think that anything over 25 million, I'm I'm struggling a bit with. Maybe I'd push to 30. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's a tricky one, that. The, I love Kimmich. I think he's a great player. I think he's brilliant. I think I'd sign him without question. I think it had really good quality and depth to two positions, world-class quality. But you have to get the price right with that deal. You have to get the price right. If you don't get the price right, suddenly you can overextend, and that's that's got to be keen. Um, Anna says, Tom, you are real disciplined with your timings. How many times have you been late for our 8 a.m. show? Hey, who's pointing fingers now? This ain't fair. <laughs> Coming for me. I do this show every single morning for you guys. Um, look, if I'm a few minutes late, there is usually very good reason for it, um, to be fair. I know I can be a few minutes late. There is either a technical issue, which I'm trying to sort out, which we know can happen consistently and a lot. You know, there might have been a situation at home that I've had to sort out as well beforehand. My hair might not have dried yet. <laughs> There's a number of reasons why I might be late. But I always bring you the show unless there is a significant uh, issue like awful food poisoning for example so yeah but come on i think i can be allowed a few minutes if i need them if indeed because i'm so committed to producing this show for you guys uh Dominic, uh dominico says i can't wait for the city match tom it's going to be great such a huge game and i'm loving being a gooner right now indeed look I, that game is really exciting i don't think you know losing it should spark a meltdown Arsenal need to go there and try and win it. And I'm the most confident I've ever been as an Arsenal fan, perhaps going to the Etihad in recent times. I really am excited for it. Um, if we can come out of there with even with a draw, I think it's a good result for Arsenal because it's still then in our hands in some degree. I know it would it maybe would open things back up for Liverpool, but I just think there's there's so much excitement about that game. If Arsenal can win it, goodness me, there is something special still to come, I think, for Arsenal. Uh, MJK says, Arteta handled the Aubameyang situation perfectly. Gave him chances, made him captain, disciplined him all the stages, and it wasn't enough. Aubameyang was a great player for us, but turned into a bit of a bad egg. And I think that's absolutely fair. You know, Arteta gave him a new contract, gave him responsibility, gave him chances, punished him when it came to first discipline issues, and yet he did ish he made problems again. It wasn't a case of like, this is one done. You know, he actually gave him opportunities. People complained about Arteta's handling of the Willian situation. Some of you might remember that he went off, to, I think, to Dubai. And there was an issue with the timing of when he went off to Dubai. And people said that Arteta didn't handle that situation well enough. He didn't discipline him harsh enough. But he still gave him chances. And he did the same for Aubameyang. You know, he punished him. But he gave him opportunities after to prove his worth. And he just threw it back in his face. I can't, I, you know, I, I cannot, categorically cannot back the side of, of a Bamiang at all in that situation. I think most of, most Arsenal fans would agree as well. If you watched that, if you were there 
for the Arsenal Chelsea game when Aubameyang was at the Emirates in a Chelsea shirt, and you heard the boos, you heard the whistles for Aubameyang, a player that had scored loads of goals for us, a player that had won an FA Cup for us, effectively nearly single handedly, and he was being booed. I think that told you everything that you needed to know about how the majority of those fans inside the ground felt about Aubameyang and they were coming out on the side of the manager because I think they have they have seen and witnessed what has happened since Aubameyang has left, which is Arsenal moving in one direction. Simple and as easy as that. Khan says, with Trippier and Walker over 30, Southgate is again going to have to deal with this situation. Weak management on his behalf. He's just saved his own skin to the media and didn't care about the media backlash. I assume that's media backlash for Ben White. Uh, Twinney says, I knew Aubameyang was finished when he came to training with the Travis Scott Braids, even though he was balding. Uh, brother lost his fire. I don't know if it's anything to do with your hairstyle. I'm not going to go into that at all. I think, you know, if you've got, you can choose what you want as your hairstyle. I don't think that represents uh, ill discipline. Um, but what I would say is on that is that it's about your behavior. Wear what you want to a degree. I think, you know, obviously there's there's certain protocols when it comes to to uniform. You know, you have to wear the training kit, etc. But, I mean, you can arrive to the, the great training ground, and, as far as I'm aware, in pretty much your own casual clothing as long as you're training to the Arsenal, tra- uh, changing to your Arsenal training gear. And, le- and you can leave in your own, you know, clothing as well, etc. I don't think there's anything to do with, you know, what a person looks like or how they have a hairstyle or what clothes they wear. It's about their behavior. That's what it's about their character. That's what matters. I couldn't give a flying F, you know, about what people wear or what people have their hair like. It's about the, how they behave, how their character is. That's what you judge them on. I'm not going to judge anyone on their appearance or anything like that. It's, it's completely different. Certainly used to. I remember back in the day, I've learned, you know, I've grown as a person. You, sort of, you take like glancing looks and think, oh, have an opinion about them based on just nothing, having never spoken to them. But you've got to learn to grow and not do that. Um, as she says, how funny it will be if City were to face points deductions by the time we play them. That won't happen. Uh, Ashish, the um, the investigation into Manchester City is something that we won't see an outcome until potentially even the end of next season. It's going to be a very long time before we get any kind of answers um, in the Manchester City case. Uh, Avinash says, who do you think will be the number one target for Arteta in the coming transfer window? Really good question, but one I don't have an answer to. There is a lot of names at the moment going out there. We're being linked to a number of strikers, a number of midfielders. I don't think there is a Declan Rice at the moment that stands out for us right now. I don't think there is. I really don't see who that standout candidate is at the moment. I think we'll have a better idea the closer we get to the summer when we start seeing some movements towards the end of the season and into that summer transfer window. Um, William says, even when we beat Man City, <laughs> what do you want to beat uh, the me- What do you want to bet that the media will still turn around by trying to undermine Arsenal's chances of winning anything? Look, at the end of the day, William, you've got to come to accept that there's always going to be people out for Arsenal. There's always going to be people that aren't fans of Arsenal. There are people that support different clubs that are in the media. There are people that want Arsenal to fail. That's just a reality. You know, I'm in the media myself, and I'm not someone that wants Spurs to succeed. I don't want United or Liverpool or Chelsea to succeed. I'm objective when I talk about them. I had to go to Stamford Bridge and cover Chelsea last week, and I wrote about them. I did the player ratings, did the press conference, and I wrote about them objectively because I'm kind of from the perspective of that journalistic point of view. Does that mean that everybody else is going to be able to put their dislike or hatred of Arsenal aside whenever they're talking about them? No, not always. And then certainly I don't always put my hatred and dislike of those clubs necessarily from a fan perspective aside when I talk about them here or even when I talk about them in opinion pieces. You know, I think it's different. But it's just football. How can you expect everybody to talk about Arsenal in glowing terms when we know that not everybody likes Arsenal? You know, you you can't expect that. I think it's unfair to expect that. I think it's unfair to expect journalists if they have preferences, if they have allegiances, if they have teams always. like People in CoCom, I, I remember the co-commentary complaints, complaining that Gary Neville was too biased towards Manchester United, complaining that Carragher was too biased towards Liverpool. I really couldn't care less because I'm, I understand that they used to play for these teams, that they have their allegiances to these teams. They're still very critical of these teams, you know. I really don't mind. I accept that people aren't going to be perfect and aren't going to be unbiased in every sense. All I do ask for is when it comes to analysis of kind of decisions or analysis of of positivity or analysis of kind of progression, that it is appreciated. And I think some do, some don't. You know, I think that Gary Neville could, for instance, that video he posted celebrating Manchester United's late win against Liverpool in the FA Cup, that emotion that he showed, that immaturity, as he might label it, 
And when he talked about Arsenal celebrating and talked about Arsenal's emotion as a problem and then to show it himself, there's some hypocrisy there. So I think there's a level of consistency that you need to demand and ask for and certainly can criticise if it doesn't exist. But I always get a little bit ired about the fact that some people moan that people are too are slightly biased in some ways towards a club that they might follow or biased against a club that they, they have a particular dislike for because of their own fan allegiances. It's football. It's tribal. It is what it is. It exists. So, you know, it's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. And you just have to fight the corner of your club. You just got to be objective when the opportunity to have a discussion with the people that are being slightly biased perhaps towards or against your club you know, comes around. It's about having that objective thought being grounded enough to argue your point coherently and and uh, respectfully as well. So, you know, that's key. Uh, Gunners Elite says, Tom, my hatred for them lot down the road will not allow me to give them the respect of calling them by their name. I have never said that word and never will. Spuds now and forever. And that's fair, you know. Now, I can't do that. If I write an article about Spurs, it's because I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Tottenham. I'm going to say Spurs because it would be very unprofessional of me if I didn't do that. I absolutely understand where you're coming from. You know, and, you know, I have a personally, when I play FPL and play fantasy football, I have a no Tottenham rule. I have absolutely no Spurs players in my team, which last week, by the way, when loads of people played their free hits because there wasn't too many, you know, games on, most people put Spurs in, most of the people captains on. And because I had that rule and I put Munoz and Castagna from Fulham in, I scored some decent points on a week where there wasn't too many points up for grabs, you know. So you can be petty in some ways, but when it comes to being, you know, in the media, there is some, there are rules, you know, there are expectations, there are standards. You know, fogging standards. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Alvin Mod says, how are players' songs introduced? Who writes them? And more importantly, how do they get spread through the fan base in the arenas? I mean, it used to be just kind of in the ground back in the day. It would just be in the ground that a few fans would kind of like come up with some songs and they would be said. Maybe they'd be put on forums or things like this. They would come up in the pub. Now, these days, it happens a lot online. There's a big social media drive. It still might happen in a very organic way, like I've just talked about there and as it did before. But now you've got the benefit of it being spread on social media. You've got the benefit of it spreading through different fan groups. People come up with songs, posting videos of them, singing them. Sometimes they're a little bit cringe and they get ripped apart for them. Sometimes they get praised for it. You know, sometimes they get really loved for it. So it's. I think it's changed. I think it's really changed recently as well. So... Yeah, it's certainly worth. Um, it's certainly worth. I think at least the attempts that are made to create songs of players. I love it. I think there are players that still need songs that aren't necessarily either haven't taken off, or if they have got songs, they're not sung enough. I think Gabrielle needs a song. I think David Raya probably needs to get a song very soon. You know, Declan Rice. Just, I mean, here's Rice, Rice Baby, but you never hear us singing that. So perhaps Declan Rice needs a song. You know, there are loads of players that that need a song. I think, but uh, they happen organically and. It's important sometimes maybe not to force them. Rob says, if we win the Premier League, is there any angle we focus more summer transfers on multiple young players and hail enders rather than one or two 80 million plus players? If we're good enough to win, focus on the future. I think that there is going to be an emphasis on Arsenal looking to try and sign young players and improve the academy and improve the you know, the roster of talent we've got coming through the under-18s, under-21 squads. They will obviously still want to be adding some senior talent and some senior stars to come in and make an immediate impact to replace some players in the squad like Partey and Ramsdale that are probably going to be moving on. And Ketia, Nelson maybe as well. Smith Rowe could yet move on. We'll have to wait and see. Um, and there is going to be spaces and gaps to fill. But I think there is something to be said about Nuaneri's promotion. Miles Lewis Skelly could make a promotion to the first team next season. We're going to have to wait and see. But we need to see them get opportunities next season. That's what we want to see most of all. Those early League Cup games, we need to be throwing Ethan Nuaneri into those games. Those early group stage games, bringing them on perhaps as well, even though we've got, we've got more group games this season, of course, or the season coming up, because the Champions League format is changing. It's changing to a round-robin system. So there's scope that that could yet change significantly between now um, and the opportunities that could change between now and, and the start of next season. So, yeah, there's plenty. Uh, Gunners Elite says, now I hear you, Tom. You've got to conduct your business with decorum. Um, I've never heard you swear before. I didn't swear. What are you talking about? Fogging. You know, it's that, you know, it's that we've changed the words. It's like fricking. Fricking and fro... <laughs> <laughs> it's what Arteta says, isn't it? It's the fogging standards. Uh, I'm not swearing. Come on, come on. I didn't. It's not. There's no fu's here. There's it's fogs going on here. <laughs> but there you go. Um, Maule says I follow Real Madrid fan chatter, and they say that they would be willing to let Rodrigo go. I think he could be our next star player, like Sanchez from Barcelona. How well positioned are we to go for him? I'd be very surprised. Very, very surprised indeed if Arsenal go for him. I'd be very surprised if Real Madrid 
let Rodrigo go. He seems like a brilliant talent. I don't know why they would allow him to leave. Um, Rejected Billionaire says, seems like England coaching staff are totally unprofessional, inexperienced in handling different types of people. I mean, this incident in particular, I think, has highlighted some issues for sure. Obviously, there is experience there, but maybe there's a lack of experience in handling different situations like has been pre pre uh, presented to them this time around. Uh, Louis says, uh, I have some ideas for chance. I wouldn't ever post them myself on social media. And I, yeah, it's, I tell you what, it takes, a li it takes a hell of a bit of front to jump on and, and post a video yourself singing a chant. Because if it doesn't work, my goodness me, you're going to be ripped apart. So in some ways, you've got to respect it. You've got to respect the uh, the front and the bravery that some fans have to post their own. I think I saw recently, someone sent me a video. Was it Owen? Yesterday sent me a video of this rap artist um, doing a Mikel Arteta song. Let me see if I've got it. Uh, was it Owen yesterday? Yes, it was Owen. Um, there was, uh, it's called Eight, it's 80. Um, 80 Mikel Arteta. Give it a Google, give it a YouTube and have a watch of it and let me know what you think. I wouldn't send that with to be yesterday. I think it's too bad, to be fair. Quite like it. <laughs> it's not too bad. Uh, Twinny says, uh, don't want us wasting our entire budget on any of the strikers on the market as none of them are guarantees. That position should be the cherry on the top of the title winning side like a Haaland was for City. It's different. I, I, your Haaland's come around once every decade. It's impossible to necessarily get that player, you know. So there's no guarantee you, you're going to get a harlot to come around so you have to wait until that happens it's so difficult to be able to guarantee getting a harland you know so i wouldn't necessarily say that um we wait then i think we have to try and find the player that we think can be as good as a harland in the future is that goyokarez i mean he's got more goal contributions this season than harland so look toward him uh there is rather stunningly um over 1200 of you watching on youtube which is amazing thank you for the very kind support that you continue to show to the channel we did hit 55,000 subscribers yesterday on the channel and we're closing in already on 55,001 or uh, not 55,001 but for other 55,100 uh, we're already half of our way there so it shows you the community is growing this family is is increasing and it's so, so humbling to see so many of you continue to show the channel as much love as you do. We've also noticed a massive upturn of those listening on Twitter recently as well. Hop over to YouTube. Make sure you chop, uh, jump in here to the channel on YouTube and subscribe because, of course, you can get involved with our chat box. And before we wrap up, I do want to give a shout out once again to, uh, to Francois for a very, very kind donation earlier on in the show. Indeed. So thank you once again, Francois. And Rancid Pumpkin, who's been a mumba now. A mumba? A mumba. <laughs> a member for 14 months. Um, he said, I forgot to push the like. So thank you, Rancy, for reminding me. Do help us on our way to 1K every single day. I'm off to start my exceptionally busy Thursday for a day off. And uh, I hope that your Thursday goes swiftly and uh, and as painlessly as possible to get to a Friday tomorrow. Um, a few things planned for today. I've got the last episode in the Halo series to watch, which is going to be... Oh, that's such a disappointing series. I tell you what, for those that are gaming fans, like you, if you are watching that show and you never really played the games, I'm so disappointed. I'm not going off on a tangent, but I do like bringing my own personality, my own life into this show sometimes. And then you watch the Fallout trailer, for those that have seen the Fallout trailer for that show coming out in April, and it's night and day. Like If you're talking about like genuine attachment to an IP, attachment to a, a genre, to a game, to a um to a story fallout is just here in terms of that tv show right now and then halo is like down it's awful absolutely dreadful it, actually it pains me so yeah and james yeah i cannot wait to watch that fallout show it's going to be great because some of you are watching shogun at the moment some of you are watching invincible at the moment it seems uh can't sound too familiar with that one i've heard the shogun one apparently that's really good um but haven't yet watched it but thank you so much everybody for listening in uh have a fantastic thursday stay safe stay well happy and respectful and as always up the arsenal